Airplanes are a great form of transportation, carrying people and cargo all over the world. But NASA is looking to fly airplanes in a whole new direction. Find out how scientists and engineers are taking new technologies to new heights. Next on Real World. It's easy to take airplanes for granted. They get you or your stuff to your destination, and we're all happy. But it's a little deeper for Michael Logan. He's a NASA engineer who has always been fascinated with airplanes. When I was a really young kid, I used to take the foam egg cartons, and I used to cut the, the tops out of them and make little gliders out of those. Mike has come a long way since his milk carton glider days. Today, he designs and builds small unmanned aerial vehicles at the NASA Langley Research Facility. Unmanned aerial vehicles are very useful for practical and experimental purposes. It's a lot easier to perform experiments with unmanned vehicles where there's no risk to a pilot, particularly those things that are either dull, dirty, or dangerous jobs. In some cases, we're looking at how do you design a small vehicle to do a particular mission. In other cases, we have a particular payload that we want to look at. For example, looking at crops to see if they're being strained by a lack of moisture. Mike's small unmanned aerial vehicle laboratory is working with the Air Force now to design a vehicle that can fly for 10 to 18 hours. If you were in a search and rescue application where you wanted to go and search an entire area, you don't just want to do that for 10 or 15 minutes. You really want to be able to stay there for a while, find the people, know exactly where they're at, what their status is, and help guide the rescuers to them. One of the first long endurance electric vehicles developed by Mike and his team uses two propellers with two different purposes. If it takes off from the runway, what happens is that the vehicle lifts off and this little dolly stays behind. And then the vehicle doesn't have the drag associated with the big landing gears. It actually has two motors, a pusher motor in the back that you see here that has one size propeller and it has a takeoff motor in the front that has a different size propeller. And the motors are actually different too. This motor in the front is designed to give lots of takeoff thrust. The only problem is it burns a lot of current when it does that, so it drains the batteries very quickly. The back motor is designed for very efficient current draw at 40 miles an hour. You switch to the back motor and you switch the front motor off. And that's what gives it its two hours worth of endurance. Very interesting configuration. Math is really very important in the design of these vehicles. We actually start with a computer-aided design model of these configurations. And they're basically mathematical models or mathematical representations of what the vehicle looks like, what the vehicle is able to do, all of the, the battery and motor calculations to determine does it have enough thrust or force to push it through the air, is the battery going to last long enough. All of those things require mathematics and we do all those mathematical calculations before we ever build the airplane to make sure that it's going to work when we put it together. And Mike's team does put it together. They design and build the plane. Then comes the moment of truth. Will it fly? This is a test of a new configuration. We always do a glide test. It actually has all the control surfaces functional and everything. It just doesn't have a, a propulsion motor on it so that we can check to see whether the vehicle is going to be stable and controllable. So my uh, students actually made the airframe and they helped fly it. Nice smooth flight to a landing. This is actually a three-quarter scale version of a larger research project that we're doing. The idea here is to do a similar glide test only with the motor running to make sure it doesn't nose down or nose up. So it's a nice big vehicle, it's about nine pounds. Nice controllable flight. Sometimes Mike and his team can rely on previous research for answers to problems they might encounter. But often, no research exists, and they have to experiment to find the answers they need. This actually started off life as an experiment to test to see how fast you can throw one of these vehicles. With these little uh, empty pockets here, we could put anywhere from 6 pounds to 12 pounds in there. And it has a little instrumentation package on it that 
records accelerations. So when you go to throw, it records accelerations 40 times a second as you're throwing. And when you release, it knows when you've released it. So it then says, oh, okay, I started at zero, now I'm at so many feet per second. You need to know how fast somebody can throw it so that you can design it so that it doesn't stall before they, it's able to fly. Without math, Mike Logan's dream of designing and building airplanes might have stalled before ever getting off the ground. I used math fairly regularly. A lot of the math classes that I had, some of them were very, very complicated and very hard. But uh, you know, once you get past those and you start realizing, oh, you know, I can use some of that stuff in my real work, it comes in very handy. Click on nasa.gov to find out more about what's going on at NASA.